And I want you to make room right now to make room for Jesus, make room for his spirit in your life, make room, make room, whatever, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, cast it out, remove it, make room, make room, make room. Jesus, we welcome you. You are welcome in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our hearts. And we pray in totality for everyone here. And above all, you, Lord, would be present in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Be seated there. I'm not going to keep you long this morning, but please give me your full attention for just a few moments. I want to read a a, a scripture to you that's been on my heart for several weeks about this meeting today. It's in Luke's gospel, chapter 2 and verse 41. It's the story of when Jesus was in the temple. Luke's gospel, chapter 2 and verse 41. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. When he was the festival, according to the custom... And after the festival was over, while his parents were still returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a whole day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Don't you know I had to be about my father's business? Praise the Lord. I guess we all know that story. We know it extremely well. I want to look at it from a a, a Christmas perspective, however. I was Christmas shopping on Oxford Street a couple of weeks ago. And I walked up. There was a couple in front of me with a tiny little boy. And the mother, as I walked up, the mother put her finger in the boy's face. And she said, don't you ever. And I thought it was a bit hard, you know, I felt sorry for the little thing. And as I got closer, I heard the father say, you never off your mother's hand. They were having a normal reaction, right? Isn't it? If, you've, if you're holding on to something precious, something special, I mean, let alone your child. You do not lose that child, do you? What mother loses their child? Amen? Women, hello? (laughs) What mother loses their child? And here in this story, you see that Mary and Joseph, they not only lose him, they lose him for days. And that thought just really, it really gripped me over the last few weeks. What a casual attitude. Do you remember two weeks ago, we talked about Mary and Joseph when the angel came, remember? And how, when that first announcement was made, remember the reaction of Mary. Oh, be it done unto me, right? Remember the reaction of Joseph. They were both excited. Now you think back to the time when Christ came into your life. Think back to the time when you got saved. Remember that excitement? Amen? But this story is 12, 13 years later. And look at what has changed. Suddenly, what was enormously exciting, what they had made room for, somehow, maybe he was getting in the way a little bit. Right? This was a big celebration. And that's another point. You notice they didn't lose Jesus in a nightclub. Right? This was actually a religious feast. Church. They lost Jesus in church. They were attending the festival. 
They were paying attention to the festival. Now you can imagine that enormous feast, which was actually about Jesus, coincidentally. You can imagine that feast. There would have been great food. They're going to see family members, right? They're all going to get together and party. And it's going on for days. But in the middle of that, what do they lose? In the middle of that, who do they lose? And friends, I tell you this. Please give me your full attention right now. Some of you go to church. And some of you have Jesus. There's a big difference. And Jesus and Mary, they were in church. But they didn't have Jesus and they didn't even know it. And some background like me and for you it's probably okay just to come here on Sunday enjoy the music enjoy everything and maybe in your flesh your conscience feels better and yet we can go and live whatever way we want right something wrong there Mary and Joseph after spending time with Christ after having him around all that time suddenly for some reason had become very casual about him And they didn't even notice that he wasn't there. That is shocking, don't you think? Do you have Christ this morning? It's seen by your behavior, but I don't mean this morning. I mean tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Do you have Christ? It's seen in our decisions. It's seen in our everyday. Do you have Christ? And how close is he? The second point I want to show you to make is that they were totally unaware of that absence. I got off the plane in Singapore, in the airport. I always do the same thing. I I get off the plane because I've been on there 14 hours. I go in the toilet. I get changed. I have a shave, you know, and I just take my time because I'm just going to work. And I was standing there at the counter shaving. And this man came up and said, excuse me, sir. And he was holding an iPhone. And I looked, you know, is that my, that looks like my phone. And he he was smiling and he said, I saw you. You put that down. And you just walked. I didn't know. Amen. You don't want to lose your phone now, do you? (laughs) I, I didn't know. I wasn't aware. And I thank God for that man. They're not aware of it. They're not aware of it. Losing Christ and not being aware is shocking to me. I mean, Brian and I, imagine Anne if you go home and you left Brian here. (laughs) Right? He's terrible. Imagine worse than that, if she she went home and tomorrow, a whole day, because that's what they did, a whole day, and tomorrow she's eating Christmas dinner. And she looks through and says, where's what's-his-face? You know, the guy. Where is he? That's right, Brian. Now, it's not going to happen, is it? But that is exactly what happened. Now, he's still going to be your husband. You're still going to be in a relationship. You're just not in fellowship. There's a big difference. I have a lovely family. But one of my brothers, Gerald, doesn't communicate like the rest of the family. He's still my brother. Right? I have relationship, but I just don't have any fellowship. And some of you are born again. Okay? But that's not the whole deal, right? The Apostle Paul makes it very clear. I want fellowship with Christ. He made it clear. As I leave this planet, Paul emphasized, let this one thing be found in me, that I be found in fellowship. That means you've still got his heart. You're not letting go. Remember, he won't let go of yours. It's you letting go of his. It's you walking away from him. Do you have Christ this Christmas? Do you have Christ? And whatever you do, don't leave him here, if you know what I mean. Amen. Don't leave him here. Take Jesus from this place, because it's a sad reality that some people don't. This is, some people have more of a relationship with the church than with Jesus. That's a sad truth. I was thinking this morning, I was in here early, of a man I knew years ago. His name was Tony. And I used to see him in a place I went to regularly. He used to sit, he was a caretaker. He used to sit on the wall. 
And I used to talk to him and witness to him about Jesus. But he didn't want Jesus. He just wasn't interested. He had been in a church. He told me he was born again. He was a Christian and all that. Tony was ill. He was dying. And I remember the last time I saw him. I was walking away and I could, he called me and he said, Mike. And I remember his words. He said this to me. I used to be like you. I used to go to church. I used to clap. I used to tell everybody. I used to be like you. But not now. And I said to him, Tony, I told you before, you need to come back. You need to come back to the Jesus you left. And he rejected me. He said, no, not anymore. Tony, you need to come back. I never saw him again. I never saw him again. And I often thought about that guy. What a silly thing. Folks, it's one thing to wander away in life. We can all do that. But it's another thing not to come back. It's a very serious thing. And I want to call you this morning to come back to your God. Okay? If you have wandered, if you're still born again, fine. You've got that relationship. But God deserves more than that. Amen? Deserves much more than that. So are you a church goer? Or are you a Christian? A true Christian? Are you born again? Without that, friends, there's no salvation. Jesus said, you, that's you, must be born again. A new spiritual life. There's no compromise. And without repentance from sin, there is no salvation. And if anybody tells you different, do not listen to them. This is too important. Every person in this room... You not only need to repent of your sin to get saved, you need to stay repenting to stay saved. Yeah, I think we can say it a little bit louder. Yeah, you not only need to repent of your sin to get saved, you need to walk in repentance to stay saved. And if you don't, and you're going to come here every week, and you're going to slip out of fellowship, You're going to slip away then from relationship. And before you know it, you'll be like Tony, sitting on some wall, saying to someone like me or you, I I used to be like that. I used to be like you. Sad, isn't it? Don't Don't let it happen to you. Don't be a church. It's good to be in church, but... Don't be misled by what church is. It says in that narrative there, it says suddenly Mary and Joseph realized that he was gone. Where is he? And then they started the journey back home. Uh, Sorry, back to the Passover feast. And if you look at that, that's fantastic. Like if you've ever lost your keys or you lost your phone, what do you say to yourself? Where did I last have that? When was I last holding it? Where did I last see that? They found Jesus exactly where they left him. And I want you this morning on this Christmas Eve, when, when in your life was the time that you were closest to Jesus? Just think. That you knew the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You knew him in you. When was that? Second question, what did you do in your life to achieve that? What did you do? You did something. There was a preparation. You were living your life a certain way. When was Jesus most close in your past? Think about it. Whatever you did to get there, do it again. Amen. Amen. It's not rocket science. Do the same thing again. Whatever you did before... It'll work again. They had been with Christ. They wandered from Christ. They became casual over time. But they went back to Christ. And thank God for that. It's like the story of the prodigal son. Remember the prodigal son? It says he suddenly woke up as well, didn't he? He came to his senses and he said this, I will arise and I'll go back. I know where my father is. 
By the way, it's not the father who's lost, right? It's the son who's lost. And in this story, it's not Jesus who's got the problem. It's Mary and Joseph. And he says that to him. They walk up and they say, what are you doing? Why are you treating us like this? And Jesus answered to them, why are you searching for me? (laughs) You're the problem. Jesus hasn't gone anywhere, friends. He hasn't gone anywhere. It is you and I who wander in our hearts. Life and everything off life distracts us and dulls His presence. We get distracted left, right, and center. There's no reason in God's mind or God's heart that you can't come back to Christ this Christmas. You know, when your kids are young, you you play hide and seek. But you don't really hide very well, do you? You kind of, you know. You want them to find you. And in the same way right here, right now, God wants to be found by you. You know when that baby was born, there was a spotlight down from heaven. (laughs) There was a star. There he is. There were angels singing. Angels calling shepherds, calling kings, directing people to him. And right here this morning, the same is true for you. God wants to be found by you. He wants a home in you. But you got to make room. I got to make room for him. It's the greatest mistake. Same day that we have the greatest gift, we have the potential for making the greatest mistake. Will you make room this morning? For some of you, you know, during worship there, I just felt someone's going to get saved here today. Someone who's not born again. Maybe you've been in this meeting and you're looking at everybody else and you think in your heart, I wish I was like them. Or you think, I'm not like them. I know I'm not, but I'll just do what they do. You know, Make myself fit in. There's a parable about that. You don't need to do that. Don't do outward things to try and fit in this crowd. It's not like that. Scripture has a wonderful line. It says this. That Jesus will never turn away anyone who comes to him. Fantastic. Fantastic. That includes you. That includes me. And every one of us in this place, if you're not born again, make today your day. You need to repent of all sin. You know what your sin is. You don't need me to tell you. You've got that. You've got a conscience. You know that. Whatever comes alive in you and you know it's wrong, repent of it. And put your faith in this Christ who has come to save us. What a wonderful thing Christmas is. So I pray each and every one of you, if you're saved, I want you not just to have a relationship, but to leave with fellowship. If you're not saved, enter into a relationship with your Father in heaven by repenting of your sin and being born again. Amen? Stand to your feet. I'll invite the worship team to come back. I'm going to give you a moment or two. Just bow your heads. Concentrate on your own self for one moment. Concentrate on your walk with God and where He is for you. If anyone here is not a Christian, you're in the right place. Jesus is ready. God is willing and more than able to save you. You just repent of any sin. Put your trust in him and let him save you like he has done millions of others before you. Believe in him. Accept him. Receive him. And for those of you who are saved, but you know in your heart, like Mary and Joseph, Jesus has slipped You've let go of his hand. You've wandered off. Just come back. Come back. Come back to Christ. Come back to Christ. Come back to Christ. Not just relationship, but fellowship with you, Lord. God, we ask your forgiveness for 
being casual about this great gift. And above every other thing this Christmas, we want you. We want you. We want you personally in our lives, in our homes, and in our hearts.